Um, yeah, it's, it's obviously, again, as I said earlier, every business is different in how it should be planning and, and, and creating its contingencies. Naturally, there are, if we look at a deal, then obviously no problem, carry on um, in, in terms of transition period and then potentially a free trade agreement with the EU beyond that. Realistically, I think what everyone's interested in is what we do in the event of a no deal Brexit. Um, and it isn't April Fool's Day by chance that we crash out um, of Europe. But <clears throat> you know, come 30th of March and beyond next year, what do we do? How do we, how do we trade? Realistically, you need to be looking back now, planning now for what the potential impact of that is. Where do you source from? Um, what are your trading terms on those products that you're sourcing from? You know, inco terms when you're sourcing typically or selling to Europe uh, are, are terms that are rarely bothered with, shall we say. You either buy delivered or you sell X works. You know, realistically, in an environment where we go hard deal Brexit, inco terms become quite important. At what point do costs and risks change? Um, you know, the, the duties and taxes scenario obviously exists, as Terry has clearly said. Those those impacts are there. So. How do, you, how do you plan for that? How do you deal with that? It's, the options are available in terms of, you know, we all know, I think, that the biggest trade route into and out of Europe is Dover-Calais, um, traditionally by truck. That is by far going to be the bottleneck. We all know that. Um, how you plan for that is look at alternatives. You know, there are other routes into and out of the UK. There are other ports and indeed airports um, that are available for you to utilise. But with uh, building in some additional lead time. You know, at the moment, you know, talking to everybody about, okay, how do I plan for that? How do I um, hedge, if you like, my business against the no-deal Brexit? So the logical one is buy more and store it, and then you should be okay for a couple of months beyond the no-deal Brexit and, and dealing with that. But realistically, that has impacts on your business in terms of your storage capacities, your cash flows, indeed your supplier's ability to manufacture more product for you. So, you know, that third one is, is one that only you and your suppliers can answer, but the other two, you don't necessarily, your cash flow, yes, there are, there are implications there that you may be able to negotiate extended terms with your suppliers. Routes into market can allow you um, an opportunity that not many people that I'm aware of are really looking at. You know, there are other routes into the UK with short sea services, with intermodal services, that you can utilise the water to take some of that strain. So you don't have to build three months' worth of uh, um, uh, inventory into your business to potentially cover a no-deal Brexit. Maybe build additional volumes into your lead times, flow your products in in an effective way, but utilise the water to take some of that strain. So have more arriving, but more frequent drops, and utilise that to take some of the strain of, uh, of that additional volume that you need to hedge. So. It is, it is difficult, everyone is different, but there are options, um, and it's a case of talking those through and working those through and, and understanding everyone's uh, points of source, et cetera.